Hello, I'm Dr. Mohit Kira, Professor of Urology at Baylor College of Medicine. Today I'll be discussing benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH. Some of you may have heard of this as prostatic enlargement. How common is BPH? Well, we know that roughly 8% of men between the ages of 31 and 40 have BPH. Roughly 40 to 50% of men between the ages of 51 and 60 have BPH. And roughly 80% of men over the age of 80 have BPH. As you can see, the older the man is, the more prevalent the disease. It's important to understand the anatomy and the physiology of what's occurring. If you look at the picture on the left, you can see a normal bladder, you can also see the prostate at the bottom, and you can see the urethra going through the prostate. On that picture, you can see an open channel which allows the urine to pass very easily. However, if you look at the picture on the right, as a man ages, the prostate grows. And as it grows, it blocks the channel that allows the urine to pass from the bladder outside to the urethra. Thus, what you see is changes that occur in the bladder, which means thickening of the bladder wall and decompensation of the bladder, and you see something called trabeculations. Over time, the bladder will continue to decompensate, and the urine can then be backed up into the kidneys and cause renal failure. So again, in severe cases of BPH, we're worried about bladder and kidney failure. What are the signs and symptoms of BPH? Well, we like to divide them into two categories. First, obstructive or voiding symptoms. These symptoms include incomplete urination, starting and stopping your stream, a weak stream, or pushing or straining. The other type of symptoms are known as irritative or storage symptoms, frequency, urgency, or getting up at night to urinate. If you haven't seen this questionnaire before, this is the most commonly used questionnaire in the world for urinary symptoms. It's translated into more languages than any other questionnaire in the world. It's simply seven questions, and you answer these questions from zero to five with a maximum score of 35. This is an excellent tool to let me know how severe a patient's symptoms are. For example, if a patient has a score from 20 to 35, the symptoms are categorized as severe, eight to 19, categorized as moderate, and zero to seven as mild symptoms. So how do you diagnose BPH? Well, it's extremely important to take a detailed history when you speak with the patient. And the most important thing I'd like to stress is the degree of bother. For example, if a patient says, doctor, I get up six times a night, I frequently go to the ur urinate, I have severe urgency, but it doesn't bother me at all. I typically don't treat these patients. What am I trying to say? A patient's level of bother will dictate whether I treat them or not. I ask them about obstructive symptoms and storage symptoms. I also ask them about their fluid intake. I take care of many patients who say they get up numerous times a night. When I ask them what they drink in the evening, some will say, Doc, I have six glasses of water, two Cokes, and a cup of coffee, and I don't understand why I get up so much at night. I say, Mr. Smith, you have to decrease your intake after 6 p.m. I use the AUA symptom score, as I've showed you previously, and I also check something called a post-void residual. A post-void residual is used when determining whether a patient is carrying or retaining urine in their bladder after they urinate. There are other causes of these symptoms. You can't just assume that it's due to an enlarged prostate. Maybe the patient has an infection, a bladder stone, even bladder tumors can present this way as well. We also know that patients who have diabetes can have many of these symptoms, and there are numerous medications that can cause these symptoms, for, such as antidepressants, diuretics, and as well as uh, medications for uh, depression as well. We also know that psychological factors can cause uh, these symptoms as well. So there are five exceptions to this rule where I tell patients, I have to treat you. And these are the five exceptions. If a patient's unable to urinate, if they have kidney failure, if they have recurrent urinary tract infections, recurrent blood in the urine, or bladder stones, these patients should start therapy and be treated for their BPH. What are the treatment options for BPH? Well, there's several. 
there's three types of medications that we can use. The first type of medication is called an alpha blocker. These medications block the receptors at the bladder neck and the prostate, and they open up the channel to allow the urine to pass once again. The second type of medication is called 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. You may have heard of these, such as finasteride or dutasteride. And what these medications do, they actually shrink the prostate by approximately 30%. Now you have to be careful because it also reduces the PSA by 50%. So whatever your PSA is, you should mentally double it and get the real value. Remember that these medications don't work immediately. They can take up to six months to show maximal benefit. There are some side effects, including erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, and decreased ejaculatory volume. In some cases, some young men have developed post finasteride syndrome, which is severe erectile dysfunction, neurologic, and depressive symptoms, and in some cases have not been reversible. So I do use extreme caution if I do use these medications. The last type of medication is daily Cialis. Now you may think of Cialis as a medication to help with erectile dysfunction, but it's also FDA approved to help men urinate better. So if a man has erectile dysfunction and BPH, this is an excellent medication to help with both conditions. Now realize that there can be some side effects, headache in 4%, heartburn in roughly 2.4%, and back pain in roughly 2.4% of patients. There are also surgical options. One of the most common minimally invasive surgical options that I perform is called a Urolift. A Urolift is where I actually place just four stitches in the prostate and hold the prostate lobes back. This procedure takes less than 15 minutes and is very effective. If patients have larger prostates, I may have to go in and use a laser and resect the tissue to allow the patient to have a better urinary flow. And rarely, I may need to do an open prostatectomy, which is make an incision in the abdomen and remove the inside shell of the prostate. So in summary, BPH is a common condition that becomes more prevalent with age. Untreated BPH can lead to bladder and kidney failure. Alpha blockers are first-line therapy for men with bothersome urinary symptoms. And men who fail medical therapy should consider minimally invasive procedures or a TERP. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this video.